Broadcasting Company presents Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Hey, Ed. Huh? Stop the car a second, will you? What for? I thought I saw something lying back there by the road. So what? It's probably a dead dog. No, no, hold it. It's too big to be a dog. Ah, oh, for Pete's sake. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's uh, right over there. Oh, oh, yeah. Come on. Holy cow. Yeah. She dead? Oh. Oh, I think I'm gonna be sick. Mm-hmm. Me too. Let's go call the cops. Here's another exciting half hour with Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Diamond Detective Agency, if there's a corpse in your cellar and your nerves are a wreck, old Rick to the rescue if you write him a check. Oh! I'm going to do with you. Can I make a suggestion? Please do. Feed me regularly, take me for walks, and be sure that you let me out nights. Some suggestion. You do that for a cat. <laughs> Hi, Helen. Hi. How are you? No, oh, I don't know. I think I'm a nervous wreck. What from? You remember when you said I ought to take up something to keep me busy in the office? Yes. You remember you mentioned knitting? Oh, no. Oh, yes. I've dropped more stitches than a cross-eyed surgeon. <laughs> You idiot, I was only fooling. Well, don't laugh. I was making Francis a pair of screaming argyles. Keep with it, strong heart. You'll win out. Yeah, you're darn right I will. Oh, what I said. Darn. Get it? Ellen, are you still there? Yes, Rick. Wasn't funny? No, Rick. Okay, come on over, let's neck. Yes, Rick. Shame on you. Yes, Rick. I'll see you about eight. Oh. You don't sound very happy. That's such a long way off. Give you time to make plans. Bye. Bye. Hmm. Now, let's see. I've got to take out one, two, three, five rows. Oh. Yeah, what is it? Rick? Oh, how are you, Walt? Very unhappy. You should see me. I've got to take out five whole rows just to pick up one lousy stitch. What? Oh, forget it. What are you unhappy about? I'll tell you about it when you get down here. Well, the 5th Precinct's 20 blocks. Can't you give it to me over the pipe? I wouldn't ask you if it wasn't important, and I'd rather not say anything over the phone. Okay, okay. Stop making like life-facing Porsche. I'll be down as soon as I finish this heel. Heel? Yeah. If you must know, I've taken up knitting. Coming from you, I am unmoved. I don't care if you're building side. You know, it's a fur-lined money belt. Get down here as fast as you can. All right, Walt. But you'll be sorry when it starts getting cold again. And I won't knit you a sweater to cover your rural blue brewery. Oh, now you get over here. Bye, Walt. Getting Walt's goat was a sport with me. Whether he'd admit it or not, he got a kick out of it, too. Sometimes I wouldn't stay on the rib as long as I usually do, but that was only because Walt always starts sounding just a little bit worried. Then I know it's time to lay off and get serious. Now, don't misunderstand me. I never lay off entirely. And I never get completely serious. Those are two habits that don't help find the solution any quicker. They just fit you with a mess of ulcers and you still end up too worried and too serious. I closed my office and headed for Walt's precinct. When I walked in, I spotted Sergeant Otis leaning back in his chair with his number 12s resting on the desk. Oh, hello, Sergeant Otis. Well, how's the big private detective today? Just fine, Otis. How's the flash of the 5th precinct? Just fine, Diamond. How's the big private detective today? You said that. I did? Yeah. Is the lieutenant busy? Uh, no, but he's happy. Why spoil it? Otis, when are you going to shine your buttons? What buttons? Oh, oh, excuse me. Gravy stains. Oh. Hiya, Walt. Rick, why don't you leave that poor guy alone? After you leave, he comes running in and cries all over my desk. Otis? Ah, He wouldn't shed a tear if he was standing in an onion warehouse watching his grandmother set fire to herself. Yeah, well, give him a rest for a while. I got a big problem I want to talk to you about. All right, Walt, what's on your mind? Well, I don't know quite how to give it to you. It isn't strictly kosher for the police force to go around asking for help. Now, wait a minute. 
I don't want any apology routine. If you want a favor, you came to the right boy. You know that goes without saying. Yeah, I guess I do. But now, this is a pretty big favor, Rick. The commissioner's on my back, and so is everyone else. It's got anything to do with this city's government. Oh, sounds rough. What did they do? Find out you were hiding a chimpanzee in a cop's uniform, calling him Sergeant Otis? Oh, now, be serious for a second, Rick. All right, if you'll just get to the point. All right, I guess you've been reading about these homicides you've been having for the past three weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah, pretty messy. Well, the powers that be say, solve them or turn in my badge. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Don't they know that this is the toughest kind of a killing? The killer's obviously got a lot of screws loose, and a maniac doesn't need a motive to kill. Don't those swivel chair bigwigs know that a crime without a motive is the toughest job in the world to crack? Sure, sure, they know all that, but the public and the press is yelling its head off, so the pressure's on. Yeah, well, what do you want me for? You've got one of the best apartments in the state. When you were on the force, it was the best apartment in the state. Now you stop that. Then stop twisting my arm. What do you want? I want help. I've got to crack this case by next week or I'm out of my ear. Hmm. You're the best detective we had on the force, and you're the best private gumshoe in the city. Well, now, that's real nice. Can you stop that clowning? Okay, okay. What about these killings? Each time they find some dame looking like the last of a hamburger sale... Excuse me a second, Rick. Yeah? Lieutenant? No, this is Oliver Dragon. What do you want, mallet head? Uh, we just got a report from a guy out in the river road. Another one of them butcher's killings. What? Yeah, some dame all hacked up and lying beside the road. Okay, get the car out. I'll meet you downstairs. Oh, did you hear that, Rick? Uh Uh-huh. Well, come on. You want me along? Of course. I can brief you about the whole setup on the way over. I don't know whether it's such a good idea to get mixed up in this or not. Why not? Well, it looks like anybody who gets close to this killer doesn't have much of a future. Well, you can't live forever. Oh, now, aren't you the sweet one? No, that's not what's worrying me. Well, what is that? When I go out, I want a nice, comfortable place to lie down in. The way this nut goes to work with a knife, I might end up at a meat locker. All right, all right, everybody back. Go on through, Lieutenant. Show them your biceps, Otis. Ah, you comic. How did all these people get out here? This is ten miles from anything. Uh, Someone must have heard me call the police. When I left the phone booth, the whole crowd followed me out here. Who are you? Oh, uh, my name is Ed Cody. Me and my friend here found the body. Where is it? Uh, right over here, Walter. Uh, how does it look? Uh, the way you thought it would. Now oh, you see what I'm up against, Rick. This is the third killing like this in three weeks. Yeah. Oh, I don't feel too good. Let's walk over this way. Yeah. Cody, you and your friend come along. We'll want to ask some questions. Uh, yeah, okay, Lieutenant. Well, whoever the guy is that's pulling these murders, he's a complete lunatic. Are they all like that, Walt? You should have seen the last one. Hey, uh, how'd you guys happen to spot the body? Well, uh, I saw it first, and I told Ed here. Uh, yeah, we were just driving along when Max spotted something lying beside the road. I stopped the car, and we got out. When I saw what it was, I left Mac here and went back to town to call you. What's your full name, Mac? Uh, McCarthy. Uh, John McCarthy. Okay. What are you doing, Rick? Oh, looking at the road. That's your car up there, Cody? Uh, it's Max. I was just driving. Now, uh, you, uh, you went ahead how far before you stopped? Well, uh, about 20 yards. You won't find much, Rick, even if the road is soft. Their car and any other one would have blocked out the killer's tracks. Hey, maybe he didn't use a car. Maybe he walked her out this way and then killed her. No, this place is 10 miles from anything. He drove all right. And this crowd has ruined any footprints for sure. Oh, here come the boys. Come on, Rick. As soon as they start examining things, we can get back to the station. Yeah, I want to go through the whole file in the last two killings. You won't find much. A change of reading never hurt anyone. Well, that's the whole mess. No leads at all, huh? Not a one. I'm getting nearsighted from looking at all the lineup. We've picked up everything from drunks to safecrackers. No leads. Same type of crime in every case. This killer's got a crazy streak as wide as Broadway. Wait till the commissioner hears about this one. Well, yeah? give me a pencil. Now, tic-tac-toe is out. I got a headache. Stop waving your gills and give me a pencil. Here. What are you doing with that map? Drawing circles. Now, you stop that. That's the scale of this city, and I don't want it loused up by your doodling. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So you make a dandy circle. Well, thanks. What's it for? How should I know? You drew it. Drew what? The circle. Wasn't that a little foolish? Of course it was. That's what I'm yelling about. Well, that's bad for you. What is? Yelling. I know it. I thought you said you didn't know. Know what? About the circle I just drew. 
What circle? The one on the map. That's what I was yelling about. Well, why? You didn't draw it. I know I didn't. You did. What for? How should I know? You're a policeman. What in blazes has that got to do with it? You were a rookie, weren't you? Of course I was. You worked your way up to sergeant and then head of homicide, didn't you? No, no, very good and well I did. Wasn't it a little tough? You bet it was. I've pounded a beat for four long years. I did it by the sweat of my brow. Now, wait a minute. How did we get into this? You asked me about this circle I drew. I did? Yes, Walt, but you didn't know what it was for. Oh, yeah. Well, what is it for? For you. You like it? Yeah, it's not bad. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. You lowlife, you conniving, dirty, underhanded louse. You always do this to me. I think you sit around nights and pull the wings off of flies. Moths. All right, moths. You sit around and dream up little monstrosities to pull on the police force and use me as a... A, a, a guinea pig. Right, guinea pig. You call me, Lieutenant? No, get out of here, you idiot. Yeah, Lieutenant. Diamond, for once, I'm going to find out what's at the end of this merry-go-round. I want to know about that circle. And I'm going to get it out of you if I have to shove that map down your throat. What was that? Huh? What was that you said, Levison? This is the commissioner. Oh, not, not, not you, Commissioner. Hey, and I can't admit to these killings. Yes, Commissioner. I want you to put on more pressure. Yes, Commissioner. What have you done about the latest? Well, I just went out and looked at the body. Well, that is my name. Yes, but... This department has been sitting around long enough. Uh, but, but... I'm but, giving you fair warning. I have accent and plenty of it. Uh, but, but, but... Your motor's running. You shut up. Eh? Oh, no, no, Commissioner. Somebody else. All right. But if I don't get some action in the next 24 hours, you're going to be plenty sailing. Yes, sir. Now get busy on it, and I'm not kidding. Get back. Yes, sir. Oh. Who was it? I am not talking to you. Don't you want to know about the circle? No. Fine, fine. Well, when I was looking over the reports on the killings, I noticed something. You don't say. Say what? Okay, okay, if you don't want to play. Be a sore head all your life. Well, I noticed that all of the killings, including the one we looked at this afternoon, were within at least ten miles of each other. And the first one, this one right here, was exactly in the opposite direction from the last one. Bully for you. No, it's, it's nothing, nothing. Well, using the first and last homicide for the edge of the circle, we find that the other killing also falls within the sphere. Okay, so what? Mm-hmm. Getting interested? Well, the girl this afternoon had been dead for about, oh, 14 hours, wouldn't you say? Yeah, but the coroner can come closer. Well, about, anyway. In the other two cases, it says that both girls were killed about 3 in the morning. If the last one was dead 14 hours, she comes close to that time, too. Okay, okay. What does that prove? Not a thing, not a thing. But it's something to go on. This is a wild one, Walt. But let's say that our killer started off with his victim victim somewhere, uh, oh, within that circle. To drive five miles, half the distance of the circle, it would take him, oh, about... Uh, Fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm, Fifteen minutes. Now, that means he left his starting point around 2.45. That's a funny hour to be so consistent. You're right. Bars close at 2, 45 minutes to talk a dame into a ride... Mm, I'd be. Well, I'll be done. I may be all wet. The killer probably started from somewhere outside the circle. But we can start by eliminating the idea of the night spots anyway. Yeah, Lieutenant. Send out a 508 and get everybody in here. I want to check on all the night spots from... Uh... 45th Street and Broadway, the center of the circle. From 45th Street and Broadway for 10 miles in every direction. Yeah, Lieutenant. Now, that means cafes, bars, bowling alleys, anything that stays open until 2 or after. And step on it. Uh, I hope we're right. So do I. I don't like walking on eggs. Then sit down. Who knows? You might hatch something. NBC is bringing you Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Walt found out the name of the last victim and the family supplied us with a picture. Her name is Martha Kirk. And they knew nothing of her whereabouts the night of the murder. You can't really appreciate a police department until you really see them in action. Inside of two hours, Walt had every dive, bar, and night spot in the 10-mile circle tag. They spread out, one man to every five blocks, each with a picture of the three murdered girls. Because it had been my idea, Walt wanted me to swim with it and maybe sink. I took a little section from 48th Street to 46th Street, and by late afternoon, I'd covered most of the likely prospects. Yeah, you guessed it. The bottom of the barrel was coming up fast, and it was emptier than a ballpark during a thunderstorm. No one had ever seen the three victims. The last spot on the list was a bowling alley. I walked in and spotted a cocktail lounge, and when I climbed up on one of the stools, a bartender with a head that should have been out on the alley walked up to me. Yeah, well, it be. 
Oh, how about a glass of milk? A glass of milk? Think you can stand it? Well, if you're worried, water it a little. I don't want to pass out on you. <laughs> I get him. He made him funny. <laughs> so did your family. You're looking for trouble? Only if I get pushed. I'm looking for information. Uh, first door on the left. Yeah. Yeah. Ever seen uh, any of these girls before? Well, what are you, a cop? Well, let's just say I'm nosy. And I've got a badge to keep me in the spirit of things. Oh, why didn't you say so? Uh, uh, let me see. Him. All right. Here's the first one. Uh, no, 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 no. I never seen her. How about this one? Uh-uh. And this one? Yeah, no. Hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sure, I know. This one comes in about twice a week. Was in last night. Gets lushed up and cries about how tough a family is on him. Uh, let's see, her name is... Uh, Kirk? Bob. Yeah, yeah, Martha. Martha Kirk. Nice looker. She was. Huh? Did she ever come in here with a man? No, nah, but sometimes she leaves with one. Huh? Same guy every time? Nah. Do you remember her leaving with a man last night? Hey, yeah. Come to think of it, she did. What time? About 2.15. We stop serving it, too. Right on the dot, that we do. Oh, yeah. that you do, yeah. Okay. Think you'd know the guy if you saw him again? Sure, he comes in a couple times a week, too. I seen him pick up a couple of strays. <laughs> I, I guess you call him a wolf. Yeah, with a hatchet. Huh? Forget it. Where's your phone? Uh, uh, right over there. Uh, hey, here. Use a slug. It's on the house, officer. Thanks. <laughs> I hope nothing's happened to Martha. She was a rotten drunk for the one of them. Yeah. Well, she was, huh? Mm. Sergeant Otis at your service. If you're in trouble, you probably deserve us. Oh, that's awful. Okay, Diamond, you don't have to get nasty. Shut up and get me the lieutenant. One moment, please. Lieutenant Levinson. You can forget about retiring, Walt. You got something? Yeah, it looks like. What did your boys turn up? Nothing yet. What is it, Rick? Don't play games now. Get over to the 47th, uh, 47th and 9th. You know the bowling alley in the middle of the block? I'm in the bar. Want me to bring the boys? No, no, no. This is one we've got to play quietly. I don't want to scare our ghoul off. I'll be right down. Hey, uh, bartender, what about that milk? Oh, 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 yeah, coming up. Uh, hey, uh, is it going to be a pinch? There is, Buster. There certainly is. Walt romped in about a half an hour later, and he talked with the bartender. He finally looked satisfied. He had to, because it was the only lead that had turned up. We told the bartender to tip us if the guy showed again, and we sat down to wait. Maybe my rabbit's foot started thinking it was back with a quartet because around one o'clock it started kicking. The bartender gave us a nod just as a big guy wandered in and sat down at the bar. He weighed in at about 2.20, and his clothes were sloppy. He ordered a drink and started eyeing a cute little number sitting at the other end of the bar. Let's take him. Now, hold it, Walt. He's making a pitch. What? The dame at the end of the bar. So he's making a pitch. What do you want him to do? Wait around till he takes her out of here? Maybe you'd like to help him sharpen his axe. Look, you haul him in now, you'll have to beat it out of him. You want him to pick the dame up? Is that against the law? Arrest me. Stop your clowning. You'd rather catch him with the goods, wouldn't you? Yeah, but now don't start that again. You butted the commission to the death. Just relax. Maybe you can pick up a few pointers. Our big boy moved all right, right up to the seat next to the cute little girl. She was under full sail and didn't seem to mind at all. He landed at 1.15. At 1.30, he'd established a firm beachhead. And by 2 o'clock, there was a flag raising. Okay, he scored. The joint's closing. And the leaving, I'm going to tail him. How? He's probably got a car. He'd spot you sure if he takes her out to some lonely place. Uh, how do I know? You put in a call, throw a dragnet around this area for 10 miles. I'm not going to let you. If he gets away with that girl, he may kill her. Look, Walt, I promise you, he won't get into that car unless I can stick with him. Come on, we'll both stick close to him until I can think of something. We followed the man and girl outside and walked a few yards behind, making like we had a little load on. They headed for a big parking lot, and that's when I got the idea. The parking attendant was just walking up to him when I stumbled forward. Hey, uh, boy, boy. Rick, what are you doing? Stay with me, Walt. Yeah, mister? Sonny, I'd, I'd like to have an automobile, please. Hey, just a minute. I was here first. Sure, honey. Don't let him get away with it. Yeah. Oh, look, old man. You, my, my, my friend here is late getting home, and he's got a wife that's ten feet tall. 
You mind if I got my car first? <laughs> oh, no, go ahead. Someday! No, relax, honey, relax. We're going to take a little drive. Huh? Yeah. Okay, mister, let's see your ticket. <laughs> well, I got it here. Some place right in my pocket. Come on, we'll walk up. I, I know where the car is. Okay, but you got to have a ticket. Rick, what's going on? Keep walking. Hey, hey, I thought you was loaded. Keep going with the police. You what? That's right. Well, what's wrong? Which one is that guy's car? You mean the guy back there with the dame? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, he gave me his ticket. Oh, it's right over there, the coupe. Rick, come on. I'm going to climb in that trunk, and you're going to get in your car and tail us. But stay far enough behind so that he doesn't spot you. Okay, but I think you're crazy. Is the trunk open? Yeah, I'll get going. Well, they'll see me coming back. Well, then tell him you forgot something in the bowling alley. I passed out in my car. All right. And, uh, son. Yeah? Don't let on that anything happened. We think that man is a killer. Oh. I squeezed into the trunk and waited. About two minutes later, the lovebird showed up and got in the front seat. Oh, thank you. Very, very much. I rode like that for about 15 minutes, and it wasn't bad until we hit the dirt road. Then my inside started bouncing around like a pound of rice in a wind tunnel. We drove for about 10 minutes more and came to a stop. I raised the trunk just enough to get some fresh air and listen. I didn't want to climb out because they'd feel the movement up in front. I was sure they could hear my breathing. Oh. What are we stopping for? <laughs> I, uh, I thought maybe that... Uh, huh? I wanted to look at the pretty scenery. Well, how can you? So uh-huh. dark. Mm. Uh, it all. I can see you, baby. Dad? Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> You're nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. So are you. They went on like that for another five minutes, and I started thinking I'd picked the wrong guy. Then the conversation changed. <laughs> What's the matter? What's <laughs> the funny? Don't you know? No, and I don't like the way you're acting. Women. That's what's funny. All the same. Huh? Like my wife. She was like all the other women. Hey, let's get out of here. You're talking funny. Funny, yeah. See a man and you like him, any man. You're all alike. Now you stop that. I just came along now because... Now come here. No. You ain't no different. Come here. No! Stop that! Let me get out of the car. Sure. Go ahead. I don't want no blood stains on the seats anyway. Blood! Ah! Go on, run. I'll catch you. I rolled out and didn't forget to take my 38 along. I spotted him in the moonlight, moving after her like a big animal. He was laughing. I could see he had something in his hand. It was a knife. She tripped and fell, and he moved in. Gave me goosebumps bigger than a grapefruit. When he was nearly on top of her, I closed in. Okay, hold it, hold it. What? Help! You shut up. Drop the knife. I'll kill her. I'll kill her like a rat. Kill her too. All right. Oh, I'm glad you got here. All right, now just take it easy. It's all over. It's all over. Are you sure you're all right, honey? You know something? No, what? I think that man is crazy. <laughs> Mr. Diamond. Good evening, Francis. Is uh, Miss Asher in? Yes, sir. She's in the study, knitting. Knitting? Knitting. Mm, thank you, Francis. Knit one, twirl two. Knit one, twirl two. 
One pearl, two. Drop three. That's the way I do it. Rick. Hello, baby. Oh, look what I've gotten into. I'm a nervous wreck. I'll never teach you. What are you building? It was going to be a surprise for you. Oh, a whole suit. <laughs> Silly. Rick. I'll get it. Hello? Uh, Helen, is Rick there? Oh, just a minute. It's Walt, Rick. Oh, well, give me that phone. Where are you? Why didn't you follow me like I told you to? Well, something happened. Well, what happened, you big ox? I could have been killed out there. I'm sorry, but... Uh, Why didn't you follow me? I got caught in the Triborough Bridge, and I didn't have a quarter. Why didn't you use your police badge? Holy smoke. Now you tell me. Ricky. Oh, uh, yeah. I need relaxing. You need relaxing? Oh, swell. Ricky. Come here. I know just the thing. No, no, come over here. There's an old spinning wheel in the parlor, spinning dreams of the long, long ago. Ricky. What's the matter, dear? Oh. Well, how about this one? Wilhelmina. Let's, let me start that again, will you? I didn't get started very well. Wilhelmina. She's the cutest little girl in Copenhagen. Wilhelmina. She has all the fellas crazy in the noggin in Copenhagen. All the roses on her cheeks and the music when she speaks and how sweet her kisses taste. Sugar cane is like my mama's Danish pastry. Wilhelmina, maybe soon we'll elope in Copenhagen. Wilhelmina, we'll share everything including my toboggan. In Copenhagen, all the other girls say no. But Wilhelmina, she says no. Nah. All the boys call Wilhelmina Willie. But I call Wilhelmina mine. Well, no, no, no. How did you like that, huh? Well, it was wonderful, but where did the orchestra come from? Oh, the orchestra? Did you like it? Mm-hmm. No, don't knock it. Rick. Mm-hmm. I told you I needed relaxing. Oh, well, how's this? Rag mop. Rag mop. Rick! Rag mop. Oh, no, Rick! Rag mop. I started that one right. I got to like that one, too. You can sing later. Oh, well, all right, all right. Now, what is it, little baby? Come here. Hmm. You know something? What? I may never sing again. You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Lieutenant Levinson was played by Ed Begley, who soon will be seen in the MGM production, Stars in My Crown. Also in the cast were Virginia Del Valle, Wilms Herbert, Lorene Tuttle, Bill Conrad, Peter Leeds, and Jack Crucian. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Tonight's show was written by Blake Edwards and directed by Warren Lewis. Dick Powell currently may be seen in the motion picture version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. Look for the private life story of Dick Powell, Pie Face and the Private Eye in the May issue of Moody Stars Parade on your newsstands now. This is Eddie King inviting you to be with us next Wednesday at this same time when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Dimension X. From the annals of science fiction, a new radio series about men and science and a future destiny. Saturday on NBC, here, Dimension X. Dick Powell and June Allison tomorrow on Screen Guild Theater on NBC. NBC.